Could you imagine if there's the same sort of scrutiny on Kamala's speeches and appearances in these media outlets as there is on Trump's? Oh, my God. Like, one of the things that we talked about was how they edited that one uh, answer that she she was asked, like, what, you know, about foreign At policy. CBS. Yeah. Yeah. They edited it completely. And I, I wasn't aware that they put an answer for a completely different question there. Well, OK, so I, I think that what happened there, having done some. In the clip we're about to watch, Joe Rogan doesn't hold back when talking about Kamala Harris, especially when it comes to media coverage. Rogan and Vance dive into the ways the media portrays Trump versus Harris, and J.D. brings plenty of examples to back up his points. By the end, Joe Rogan really lets loose on Harris, and J.D. can't help but crack up. Let's check it out. To try to understand that a little bit better is they basically just edited her answer down a lot so that she didn't sound like a total insane person. Because what aired, I think, on the smaller you know, the, 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 what aired on the channels online that yeah. had a smaller pickup was the rambling. Was the rambling the word salad? But what actually aired on the news programs was, I mean, it still didn't sound very good, but it sounded a hell of a lot better. But let me let me, let me give you a very good example. But of it's, this. it's okay, really so, not the answer. So it's like they changed the answer. But let me see. Let me see what. Yeah, no, you're right. They changed the answer. But I just want to find the statistic from from my team because I asked them this last night. So. They did change the answer, and they changed it in a way to protect her. Yes. And then, importantly, they refused to, to, to release the transcript, right? So my attitude would be, just release the transcript. Let people see what she actually said right. so that you at least have some integrity as a journalistic outlet. But, but okay, so here, here's – you, of course, I'm sure paid attention to the kerfuffle over a comedian at the Trump rally at MSG – I think you even know this guy, right? He's a good friend of mine, okay, yeah. Tony so, Hinchcliffe. So, so he tells he tells a joke about, um, you know, Puerto Rico. The number of mentions on CNN about this joke in the last forty eight hours. This was as of last night. One hundred forty three on MSNBC. One hundred one on ABC. Fifty three on NBC. Thirty two and on CBS. Thirty one in two days. They talked about that joke effectively nonstop. You know what it means to have 31 mentions on NBC News about this particular thing? That is a crazy, that is saturation. Last night, Joe Biden called the half of America that's going to vote for Donald Trump garbage. Do you think that the word garbage is going to appear on CNN 141 times over the next two days? No. I would bet no. Now, what's the difference? Well, one difference is that it was a comedian telling a joke, and it's the president of the United States telling what he actually thinks. Another difference is, again, it's a comedian with, at best, a tenuous connection to the Trump campaign. And on the other hand, you have the actual sitting president at a vice presidential campaign event telling the vice president, or sorry, t telling the entire country at an event sanctioned by the Kamala Harris campaign that half of Americans are garbage. And I guarantee the media is not going to cover this in the same way. I mean, here, let, let me, I, I don't know if Jamie can bring this up, but I tweeted about this last night, that Politico, when they initially tried to write the story about what had been said by Joe Biden, they said that Biden had called racism against Puerto Ricans garbage. Well, who disagrees with that? I think that racism against Puerto Ricans is garbage, but that's not what he said. He said right. that Trump supporters are garbage. He right. said it's on video. So Politico tried to like retcon this. It turned out there was a video so we could actually see for ourselves what was actually said. But the amount of dishonesty in the American media really is off the charts. It is, but also with Joe Biden, I think at this point in time, he's literally that crazy guy on the porch yelling at the neighbors. <laughs> I mean, he's – no one thinks he's there, which is also one of the fascinating things when they asked her, when did you know that he was mentally impaired yeah. and why didn't you talk about it earlier? And there's this, Joe Biden has always done the amazing work – that Joe Biden does. It's just like this long. Like, Sorry. where are you going? Yeah. You want to get the like the lights that they use for the air traffic right. controller? Like, come that's this right. way. Yeah, come this way. Like, help her out. Do you think well, she wears an earpiece? Uh, I wouldn't be surprised. I the, have no the idea. The earpiece but, one was amazing. But man, the she just. Bluetooth thing. The ear, it, ear it, It's earrings. astonishing. She talks. The only way I can describe it is she talks in circles. Yeah. Right? It's, it's like. Tim Dillon says it's like she does gypsy curses. <laughs> because she speaks in gypsy curses. <laughs> that's very good. All right, here's the deal. Kamala Harris is in real trouble. Joe Rogan's massive audience just saw, through his interviews with Trump and J.D. Vance, that a lot of what the media has been saying about these two just doesn't hold up. 
All those narratives about Trump being mentally unfit, too old, or Vance being weird, or even fascist, none of it's lining up with what people see for themselves. The reality Joe Rogan's laying out is clear. While Trump has now won the election, Harris is looking more like a media-manufactured candidate who's struggling to connect with people. Rogan's breakdown of the situation is a wake-up call, showing that media manipulation can only go so far.